Hi, it's Keith Van Worm with Van Tech Consulting. Uh, today, what we want to talk about is a little bit of pond testing. Um, there's been a lot of rumor and hubbub and opinions and uh, things like this in the industry, specifically test equipment manufacturers, telling customers that they can't test with a broadband lights, uh, light meter, um, that they'll get erroneous readings and that the readings will be so bad that, you know, of course, your pond's going to fail and, you know, there's going to be catastrophe in the end of the world. Yes, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, what they want you to do is they want to use a um, pond power meter. So these are very specific power meters. They measure um, bursting light. So they, they measure the 1310 as well as the 1490, 1550 simultaneously, give you accurate readings. Um, and then you hook up your pond and everything's good. So let's go through pond really quickly. Just, uh, just a quick overview. Um, pond uses a splitter. It has light sources built into, so this is a, a meter. So we'll put that over here. This is your ONT or your OLT, excuse me. This is your OLT. Your OLT has, um, two lasers that are outputting light. It puts out 1490 and 1550. In your ONT at the far end, it puts out 1310. So that's going to be your light going upstream. These are your two downstreams. 1490 has been designated as your data stream. 1550 is designated for your RF video. When the ONT is not connected, so in other words, if you disconnect an ONT from the OLT, the ONT stops putting out light. It will only put out light when light, for lack of a better term, when it's requested. So think of it this way. If we had 32 customers sitting out here, all of them with ONTs that have the capability of putting out 1310, and they all broadcasted at once, how would they know whose data is what? What's going to happen is the OLT or the ONT bursts traffic. In other words, it only turns on when it needs to send traffic and when it's told it can send traffic by the OLT and then it shuts off and then the next ONT goes and the next ONT. So in the architecture of PON, the upstream, so from ONT to OLT, is what's called time division multiple access. So each ONT is talking one at a time in a very polite conversation. Downstream, the 1490 and 1550 video is just broadcast traffic. It sends all the information for everybody to everybody on that splitter. You only open the packets that are addressed to your address. When we go out and test PON, because the ONT will not transmit light unless it sees an OLT, a PON power meter has two ports. It has an ONT port over here and an OLT port, and it sits in series. So what will happen is as the OLT sends it light, it can read it coming through the OLT port uh, backwards. So OLT port, it comes in, reads your 1490, 1550 levels, then when your ONT fires, it's capable of reading the burst traffic out of that ONT and giving you a reading for 1310. Got it? All right. These guys here, um, fairly expensive in the multiple thousands of dollars. This here is what's called a broadband power meter. So this just tests light levels. It's pretty accurate. It does a calculation. You have to set it to what wavelength you're actually going to look at. So if we go into our wavelengths, we have all these different wavelengths here that we can look at and test. You know, we can do multi-mode, we can do single mode, um, we can go up to 1625, you know, et cetera. So what it does is it sees all light that hits it. And then when you set this number, it's using a specific calculation for that wavelength to give you the power reading. So let's prove this out. Even if I set this at 780 nanometers and I take this light source right here, which is set for 1550. And this is reading in DBM. So that's decibels to uh, reference to one milliwatt of power, which means this is an absolute value. I'm going to take this guy and turn on my laser. Notice that we get a reading here. It's not accurate. This is not the correct number, but it will read that light. So this is important to understand on these meters. This meter uses um, 
what we'll call filters. In other words, it tries to not block the light, but it attenuates any other light down. So in other words, it tries to separate the 1490 from the 1550 by attenuating on the 1490 port. It lowers the power of the 1550 so it won't be seen. So let's talk about that for a second. If I take this and turn this on, it's supposed to see, we can see that it has a 1550, 1490, 1310. It's low right now. But if I take this 1550 right here and I unplug that, plug that into my OLT port, what you'll see is I've got two readings on here. We have 850, negative 850 dBm. This launches out at a negative seven, so we're losing about uh, 1.5 dB. So it, but it reads an 8.48, 8.47, and on my 1490, even though that's a filtered port, it's still recognizing some of the 1550. If I put 1490 on there, the 1490 would be more powerful than this negative 32, and it would actually kind of read the 1490 more correctly than, you know, and, and ignore the 1550. So again, it, it doesn't block it. It just attenuates it down to where it can't be used or it's a non-viable measurement, so to speak. So hopefully that's clear on what these guys do. So the difference, again, when you use a power meter here, so let's say for grins that we're not using 1550 on our, on our system, we're operating GPON. Um, talking about the setup real quick, this is just a four port splitter. And what I've done is I've turned it around so it's acting as a multiplexer. All my light sources are coming here. It goes through the splitter, gets combined onto a single fiber, which comes over to our power meter. If we had 1550 and you were using this, and you had 1550 and 1490, so let's turn that on, uh, and let's get this set to a wavelength, so let's call it 1490, we're still gonna read. So let's look at the difference real quick between 1490 and 1550. 1550, we got 13.7, and 1490, we got 13.4. So um, roughly two, D, two tenths of a decibel difference between 1490 and 1550, all right? So again, it will read the 1550 at the 1490. It's just not gonna be 100% correct, all right? So now if we take the 1490 and add that onto here, what happens is, we're gonna turn this off real quick so we can get a, uh, a reading. So we go from 12.7 to 10.1. So we've got a um, 2.6 dB difference in light levels. They're calling this, when, when you get this type of reading here, they're calling it or saying that the light is coupling. And I don't like the term coupling because coupling uh, gives me an idea that the two wavelengths have joined together, it's amplified the light, they're carrying the same signal. And so, you know, we're going to get better um, signal quality. And that's not true. This is, this is more correctly, I think, additive. So think about this as you have a light bulb and a lamp in your living room, and it's got 40 watts of power. And then you go put on a second lamp at um, 100 watts. It adds light to the room, but the two light bulbs aren't giving you the same light. And at some point in time, you know, if you keep doing this, your room's going to be saturated with light and it's not going to be, um, you know, 100, you're, you're not going to keep going up and doubling the light. This is fine. These meters, if you're not running video, these meters just measuring a single wavelength, 1490 in, the, in this is fine. It'll, it'll work perfectly. Um, what you're not going to be able to tell is what the ONT is doing, right? And again, you need this meter, you know, a pond power meter to be able to measure the burst light of 1310 as well as um, you know, get that ONT to fire. You know, that's the downside of these. But as we go through and we're testing, at least what we can do with a broadband light source measuring GPON, we can go out, we can get a level reading, we can go you know, test at the splitter, um, we can then move up the, uh, the feed cable up to the, to the terminal, test there, test the drop, et cetera, and see where we have um, any loss. If you're running 1550 RF video, you're gonna get a different reading. If you're running um, XG pawn, it's going to use 1270 for the for the down or the upstream, and 1577 for the downstream. 
And that's going to coexist with the 1490 and the 1550 if you're using video. Or you have other customers that are on there using GPON and some customers on the same splitter using XGPON. So that's the beauty of the technology. But when you do that, and if you use this meter, when you're running active XGPON, you have to be aware of the skew that your meter is going to be reading. So that's what this demonstration is. If you have 1577, and again, we're talking, you know, this measurement's gonna be tenths of a dB off, if, if that much. But let's say that we're running 1490 GPON, and then we have XGPON on there. It's gonna read hotter, right? So it's going to read a couple dB um, hotter. So this is 1295, 1020, uh, 12, uh, 12, 2.7 dB of difference. So basically, if you know that you're running XGPON and you add 3 dB to your measurement, so this is a um, negative 10. So if we said, okay, I know we're running XGPON in this segment, so um, and I'm testing my my uh, GPON, you know, so I know that I should be I'm reading a, a neg 13. Got it. So neg 13, that's well within our budget, so it will work. If you're running just regular pawn you're going to be reading 12.95, you know, great. So again, they're usable. You just have to understand what the SKU is going to be. Um, one of the other things that they were saying is that, um, you know, again, it's it's cumulative and it will constantly double. So let's look at that. Let's, let's see if that's correct. So we have 1310 here. We're going to change our wavelength to 1550 just for grins. And then we're going to put in another negative 7 dBm. So it went down 8.67 from 10. So again, 8.67, um, roughly 2 dB. So it's actually the contribution of the same power light as this one. It didn't double the power. It was additive and added some light to it. And again, if we kept adding more, more light sources, each one would add a, um, light, be additive, but it's going to contribute less power to the circuit. It's not going to constantly be doubling, okay? So again, I, I, I know this is a little bit confusing, but um, this is the best way to test PON. Um, this is a recommended way. I always have the right test meter uh, for the job. That's, that's my philosophy. If you don't have one of these meters and this is all you got, or you have a power meter on your OTDR and that's all you got, then I'd much rather have you using that than nothing at all. Again, use it if you're measuring only 1490 GPON, you're going to get correct readings. If you have a combined system, then you have 1490 and 1577 on your downstream, you're going to be about two and a half to three dB. So the safe number is, let's go with three dB. So what I'm looking at here, again, is a negative 13 we're still within budget. So that's going to work fine. Again, I hope this video was helpful and that it, it shed some light on, on the differences between the pawn power meter and the um, a broadband power meter and how you have to just be aware and make adjustments um, for when you're testing. Okay, so again, just understand your surroundings. For those of you that are uh, subscribers, we appreciate you subscribing. For those of you who are just visiting, please uh, consider subscribing and uh, giving us a like on the video. If you have any comments, want to see other videos on any other technologies, uh, fiber optics or copper, please feel free to leave us a comment. If you have any questions, leave us a comment. We're always happy to answer those. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching. Be safe and uh, we'll see you on the next video.